Hello, we're now about to start our PowerPoint presentation. Make sure if you need a moment, you press pause and come back. Errol C. Basic Facts and Recap As we learned about in both the reading and the video, the Errol Sea was once the fourth largest freshwater sea in the entire world. It spanned over 26,000 square miles, and it was called the Errol Sea, which means Sea of Islands. Before the water retreated, there were many islands, thousands actually, throughout the whole region. Now that the water is gone, though, those islands are just part of continuous land. The Aral Sea served both Kazakhstan to the north and Uzbekistan to the south, and it had a huge fishing industry. At one time, there were literally over 40,000 jobs just for fishing. These fish were sold to other nearby countries. The Aral Sea was primarily fed by the Amu and Sire rivers until both were diverted away because the Soviet Union wanted to support a cotton industry in Uzbekistan. You have to understand that at that time, those countries were not independent. They were part of the Soviet Union. And in the 1960s, they were trying to find a way to make money. Cotton is a very rich plant. As we know, though, this had detrimental effects, and both rivers were dammed up and sent into the fields instead. And much of that water never made it to the Aral Sea ever again. As I'm sure you now understand, what happened to the Aral Sea is a tragedy. Many in the world actually call it the worst disaster environmentally in human history. The Aral Sea, as we just discussed, was once over 26,000 square miles. Now, it's only 2,500 square miles. That's less than 10% of the original size. Recently, there has been some good news in the north, as Kazakhstan has worked on multiple dams to try to increase flow of water into the sea. They have actually seen the water rise a little bit, but it's still not to where it used to be. In the south, though, it's very bad news. With the exception of the flood season, there is only a small st strip of the southern Aral Sea left, and that's in the west. Much of that water is too salty for anything to grow. That includes plants and animals. The summers in the area have become extremely hot and dry. That's because water is a mitigating influence on the climate. That no longer is there. This has resulted in hot and dry summers and long and cool winters. That makes it difficult to grow any crops, including cotton. The combination of salinization, which we learned about means basically adding salt to both water and land, the overuse of fertilizers to grow crops like cotton, and actually the testing of chemical weapons in the area has left much of the land in the entire area and in the former seabed polluted and dangerous. This has caused bad health effects for people, animals, and plant life. And so the question becomes, how do we fix this?